Hi everyone, I'm here with uh, Dr. John Colin from Loma Linda University. This is a one-off program and uh, the theme is quite simple. Dr. Pauline, you share with me a very interesting concept uh, that is called the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. Would you please explain to, to our viewers what that is? Mm -hmm. Well, I think one thing, I'm from Loma Linda University. It's a health science, faith-based university in the Seventh-day Adventist uh, background. And uh, so we have a high view of scripture, a high view of faith, but we also have a high view of science. And uh, one of the things you learn when you do that is that uh, science has studied faith. And in studying faith, they've drawn the conclusion that there are stages of faith. Right. That people can walk with God, can, can grow up uh, in, in the course of things, and they go through certain developments as they grow. And uh, in the particular uh, form in which I found that useful, uh, there are basically six stages, and I'll go through them just really quickly. Yes, you know, the first stage is the romance stage, you know, when you have a new relationship with God, everything is wonderful and beautiful. You don't know very much, but you're really happy, you know, to be with God, yes. you know, and to know that there is a God. Uh, second stage is a discipleship stage. You choose a community, you choose mentors, you, you learn and you grow. Uh, third stage is a success stage where you become a spiritual leader. You begin teaching what you've been taught. And uh, usually in the third stage, people are pretty confident. Uh, they don't need mentors anymore because they've arrived. If you're a pastor, everybody praises you. You know, you're a success. You're bringing in people. You're bringing in money and everything's fantastic. Uh, this is good. You've reached the peak. So right at the very peak, uh, something happens that nobody wanted and nobody expected. And that's what we call the dark night of the soul. And when that comes, you begin to question everything you've ever believed. Uh, you begin to feel like you're a failure. Uh, you have a sense that God's not listening to your prayers anymore. Uh, it can be a very dark time. For some, it's milder than for others. For some, maybe it's little bits here and there. Uh, for someone like Mother Teresa, her diary suggests that she had it for decades. Wow. That all this time that she was doing all these works, she never felt God's approval. And uh, yet she just forged ahead, you know. And uh, so a dark night of the soul is real. Uh, I find that when pastors get into the dark night of the soul, they do one of three things. One is to say, oh, this is terrible. I don't really want this. This is not the way things should be. I'm the one that's supposed to be helping the people, not them helping me. And so pastors who, who, who really reject this will try to go back to stage three to try to do the stuff that they did when they were successful. And most people will probably not even notice. But they will know that God called and they said no. A uh, second reaction would be just to leave the church. Right. leave the ministry, leave the church, uh, might say that the problem with me is the church mm. and, and the things that I believed, I got to do something else. 10, 15, maybe 20 percent will say, you know, if this is from God, I'm going to just see it through. And it, it breaks away your pride. It, uh, it, it can, you know, help you to lose some of that self-confidence mm. that you once had. And you begin to search for God's purpose for you. You know, in stage three, people can feel like they're living God's purpose when actually they're living their family's purpose or the conference's purpose or whatever, see? Um, but in stage four, you begin to seek for God's true purpose for you. Right. And that might be something very individual. Yeah. Let me stop you right there yeah. and let's focus on ministers, on pastors. Yeah. This is applicable to any yeah. believer, but let's focus for, for, for the sake of this program on yeah. pastors. So we were talking about stage one, two, and three. Mm -hmm. And then the dark night of the soul. Mm -hmm. Are you trying to say that the dark night of the soul is part of a progression? It's mm -hmm. not something that you really go back or you fall. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the dark night of the soul appears to be normal and natural for somebody who's walking with God. It's even necessary because as we become more successful, uh, pride tends to come in and it, it may blind us. You know, the proverb says the heart is deceitful above all things. We're blinded to how we're actually slipping away from God thinking we're doing his work. And sometimes the biggest names and the, and the biggest noise uh, are people who are proud of what God is doing through them. And, and you can see it. It comes through many times. But God uses the dark night of the soul, which he doesn't force us into that, but it's something that tends to happen, I think, pretty naturally. And God uses it to break us away from that selfishness and to open our eyes to growth that we haven't been willing to go. Let's uh, uh, dwell a little bit on, on how we describe the dark mm -hmm. night of the soul, because there is a, a danger that this stage in our growth may be confused um, with uh, depression. Okay. Yeah. Let's oh. describe yeah, yeah. the dark night of the soul. Well, we have a psychiatry department at Loma Linda, mm. and they asked me the same question. Right. <laughs> Do you think, what's, you know, is the dark night of the soul depression? And my response is, yes, it could be. I certainly think it's a very depressive experience. Um, but depression isn't always a spiritual thing. Right. Depression can be a physical thing. It can be a mm. chemical thing. Mm -hmm. And if a doctor can give you a pill and the dark night of the soul is over tomorrow, well, it probably wasn't a dark wasn't. night of the soul. Yeah. You see? So uh, I think uh, if a person is feeling deeply depressed as a believer, uh, they ought to at least check out, talk to a doctor, uh, maybe be referred to a psychiatrist and just explore right. you know, what the possibilities yeah. are. Yeah. And, uh, if it's simply a physical problem, let that be corrected and go on with life. No sense suffering for nothing. But if that's not it, if it is something deeper and more spiritual than that, uh, this is something that God is using to, to get through us to us in a way that wouldn't happen otherwise. Uh, there is a say amongst pastors and even leaders and administrators say to pastors that if you don't consider resignation, resigning at least once a year in your ministry, something is wrong, you're not doing your job. So <laughs> is this part of the deal, is part of the job to, to go through a dark uh, night yeah. during the year or during a 40 year ministry, you know, these five years were really, really, um, I, this can be described as the dark mm -hmm. night of the soul. I do not doubt at all that, that, that everyone has some ups and downs. And in the course of, of a given year, you're going to have ups and downs. So I think there's truth uh, in that kind of a statement. But what I'm talking about is more of a lifelong right. kind of a thing. And in that lifelong experience, uh, usually there's some point somewhere between 30 and 50 years of age most right. of the time. It can be triggered by an illness, mm -hmm. uh, by the loss of a loved one. Uh, sometimes when your child reaches the age that you were when you were abused or you mm. lost a parent mm. or your parents divorced, mm. um, it can be a trigger point that you enter into a deeper and darker period than these ups and downs that are, that are fairly normal for all of us. And uh, one reason I talk about these things is I don't want people to suffer like this alone. Right. I was speaking at a pastor's conference, and there were 10 youth pastors there, all in their 30s and maybe low 40s. And each one of them was going through the dark night of the soul. Each one of them thought they were the only one. Each one of them thought I was speaking solely for them. And at lunchtime, they discovered that all 10 of them were in the same thing. And, and, and just to know that you're not alone. Yes. Is, is, is makes such a difference. Let's let's nail a few things here. Let's 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 be very descriptive. How the dark night of the soul uh, manifests itself? What are the mm -hmm. questions that one would ask a pastor or minister would ask himself? Mm -hmm. What are the doubts that would um, uh, invade our whole being that would mm -hmm. make us go into that uh, that state? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, doubts uh, can be doctrinal. Right. There can be the sense that, you know, if I had the right doctrine, I wouldn't be suffering like this. Right. Something about this doctrine must yeah. be a problem. Uh, it can be ecclesiastical. 
the sense that maybe the church that you're in, and every mm -hmm. church, every religious institution mm -hmm. has got some sour spots. You yes. know? So you can find something to, to critique if you, if you wish. Mm -hmm. So uh, the sense that uh, you may have been led astray, that this is not working. But more than that, it's just a sense that God's abandoned you. Right. Your prayers, you know, you pray and there's no sense that there's anyone on the other side. You know, Mother Teresa just felt like there was a wall between her and heaven. Right. And she could not yeah. get through yeah. and uh, she simply plogged ahead doing what she believed was right, uh, regardless of any, any sense of approval from God. That must have been anguish. Yeah. Can we say that this is almost a consequence of the sense of entitlement and uh, success and um, the sense of, of, of being in charge that comes from stage three where everything is nice, rosy, everybody yeah. uh, uh, applauds you, everybody comes to listen to your sermons, you, you are the man of the day. Nobody needs mentors more than stage three and no stage is less interested. Right. <laughs> so what does God do with somebody who has all the trappings of success and is self-deceived in a serious way? Mm -hmm. Dark night of the soul can get through to people when nothing else can. Right. Uh, as we conclude our uh, talk today, mm -hmm. thank you so much for, for uh, accepting my invitation. Let's talk about the other stages after. What happens after? If right. you are through, what would one expect? What should one mm -hmm. expect after it went through the dark Well, night stage the four is kind of like a journey inward where you sort of pull back a little bit from mm. ministry, pull back from the success. and. Mm and try to figure out who God wants you to be. Mm. And I believe that every person has a unique purpose from God. Um, that purpose is not your job. Right. Uh, I deal with doctors and dentists and pharmacists, you know, at Loma Linda <laughs> University, and I tell them uh, that medicine is not your mission. Right. Medicine is not God's purpose for you, because if it was, you'd be out of a purpose in the kingdom. Because right. they're not going to need you to right. do that there. But God can use your medicine practice for a unique purpose. Use your unique personality, your unique gifts to change the world mm -hmm. in a way maybe nobody else can. So there's a unique purpose that God has for each one of us that we only discover through much suffering right. and uh, through much sense of loss. Those who have been transformed by this experience, then move into stage five, where they go back into the world, they go back into the success, but with different motives. Right. They may leave the general conference and go pastor a small church. Right. They may totally go in a different direction, something, something smaller and less significant than what they were doing before. And in a way, they don't care anymore. Because if you know that you're living God's purpose, it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. Right. It doesn't matter what the church thinks. It doesn't matter whether you're appreciated. And, and, and what, the, what happens at this point is sometimes there's another dark night of the soul because people in stage five discover that the church doesn't particularly approve of them. Right. And the reason for that is, uh, as Scott Peck puts it, if you're one stage ahead of the people, they'll love you admire you. If you're two stages ahead, they'll be perplexed, confused by you. If you're three stages ahead, they'll kill you. And that's what happened to Jesus, Jesus yes. on the cross. He was killed by the most serious, faithful, you know, focused religious people in all history. Right. Uh, they, they put him to death because he just drove them nuts. Mm. And so often people in stage five go through a dark night of the soul when they realize the closer they get to God, the more out of place mm. they feel in a church. And I also want people to know that if you used to be really comfortable in the church and you feel more and more out of place, that's normal too. Mm. Because the church will always be a body of people, most of whom are at stage one and two, and some who are stuck at stage three. You know? And so you will have most of the people in the church will not understand somebody who has really walked with God. And you might say, I wish you hadn't told me all this. Right. I thought getting closer to God would be happier and, and, and everything would be great. Yeah. Uh, the reality is this is a sin-kissed world. Mm. And in a sin-kissed world, people who truly walk with God are oddballs mm. and they tend not to fit in. 
Worst of all is stage six, because stage six is unconditional love. And you would think that the person who exhibits unconditional love would be the most popular person on earth. Not so. Not so. Because when you love everybody without condition, you know what you're doing? You're loving everybody's enemy. And the one thing most people will not let you do is love their enemy. And you will see people who speak well of the other tend to get attacked by their own because they are loving that enemy. It's, it's natural in, in the human context to love our own. And people who truly love unconditionally like Jesus did are not popular people. Mm -hmm. So the reality is as we go closer and closer walking with God, do not expect your life to be easier. You say, well, why would I bother? Because to live God's purpose, to do what God wants you to do, to be where God wants you to be is the most magnificent experience on earth. Even though it may bring you suffering, the joy is so exceeding great that it's worth it all. Uh, let's be very clear. Being successful, people loving you, is not, there's nothing wrong with this. Nothing wrong with it. Just be aware that if you are that person, you may just uh, encounter your dark night of the soul very soon. <laughs> if you do, what would you say to someone that is going through it right now? What is mm -hmm. the solution? Because you yeah. described stages four, well five, and six yeah. as mo even, even more complicated. Yeah, yeah. No, the dark night of the soul, I think number one is spend a lot of time alone. Right. Uh, because uh, to truly absorb the dark night, you have to live in it. If you go out there and you're busy and you're workaholic and night and day, you can ignore the dark night of the soul and it won't have the impact on you. So spend time alone, you know, think deeply on it, mm. uh, etc. But don't do it entirely alone. What you need is a mentor who's been through it before. Right. Uh, a stage four, five, or six mentor. The tragedy is there aren't many of them. In a, in a group of 100 pastors, there might be five or 10. Right. And uh, people going through the dark night of the soul will know very quickly whether someone can help or not. And they will, they will be drawn to people who are safe, people who have been through it before, right. and people who won't tell them what to do. They'll just live it with them, like Job wanted his friends mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. Just be there with me and, and uh, tell your own dark night story if that will help. But, uh, but just be a support when you're needed. Well, uh, next time? we meet, well, I will probably ask you to share with us your dark night of the soul, because you've been through one. Well, don't know how much fun that would be, but if it will help, yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, we encourage you to stay strong. Don't be discouraged. The dark night of the soul is part of your growth. Uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And um, if you would like to experience it, just go through it faithfully and enjoy and embrace what is on the other side. I should maybe say one more thing. If you're a teenager or you're in your 20s and you have no idea what we were just talking about, file it away. One day it will come in handy. Thank you so much, Dr. Pauline, All for right. spending this time with us. Thank you. And uh, yeah, maybe one day we'll go, we will hear your story. All right. Blessings to you. Blessings to you too. Thank you. Thank you.